Welcome to Regis Pre-Algebra. This is a review lesson focusing on factoring, greatest common factor, and least common multiple. If you've been missing these concepts on your tests and quizzes, you've been asked to watch this review and you will be retested on these concepts. So study this well and expect a quiz on just these ideas. So the first thing is to talk about factoring. There are two kinds of factoring. One, we could be ask, ask you to factor, give all the factors for a certain number. That means all the multipliers. Let's say I were to factor 18 and I want all the multipliers. Well, they would be 1 times 18, 2 times 9, 3 times 6, 4 does not go in evenly, 5 does not go in evenly, and once you reach this number, 6, as you're counting up, this is a 9, if you reach the 6, then you're finished. So your factors are going to be 1, 2, 3, 6, 9, and 18. You can think of them in pairs. 1 times what? 2 times what? 3 times 6, or and 3 times what? All right? So that's listing all the factors. I will be giving you some practice problems at the end of this tape. Now the second idea would be to do the prime factors. Remember what prime numbers are. Prime numbers are those numbers that only um, can be broken down into multipliers of only one and the number itself. So let's talk about that for a minute. Let's say I want to factor the number 24 into its primes. I can either think in terms of dividing by the first prime, that would be 2, let's see, how, uh, let me show you how to write this out more accurately. Okay, let's go 24, let's divide by 2, the first prime, until I can't divide by 2 anymore. And then I would divide by 3, the next prime, until I can't divide by that anymore. Okay, so my answer would be 2 times, excuse me, times prime factors, 2 times 2 times 2 times 3. Or I could write that as 2 to the third power times 3. Okay. Another way I could do this is to take any two numbers I want that divide, let's say I'm thinking of uh, 4 and 6 as the first thing I think about, and then keep breaking that down until I only have primes. So these are all primes, so again my answer would be 2 times 2 times 2 times 3. Let's give you another example here. What if I want to break down 54 into its primes? Uh, let's say the first thing I think about is 9 times 6. Neither one of those are primes, so I have to break that down again. And now all of these are primes. So my answer would be 2 times 3 times 3 times 3. Or I could write that 2 times 3 to the third power. Either way. All right. Um, let's try to find one that's even more complicated. Let's try uh, 525. Well, I can see that that would be, um, I could divide a 5 into that, and that's going to go 125 times, no, that's not right. <laughs> try that again. To divide 5 into that would be 105. I could divide a 5 into that, and that would be 21. I would divide that, so this is prime and this is prime. Keep going. Uh, this is 3 times 7, and both of those are prime. So my answer here would be 3 times 5 times 5 times 7. 
Okay, so that's all there is to prime factoring. So you need to be able to do both those scales and you need to understand what's being asked of you. They will either ask you all the factors, in which case they're not just looking for the primes, they're looking for everything that divides evenly into that number. And that was illustrated above, or they're looking at prime factors. Now, how do I do use those two ideas to be able to get the greatest common factor or the least common multiple? Let's talk about the greatest common factor first. This is the largest number. You must understand what this means. You have to study it until you understand it. I will ask you to give me a definition in English of what this means on your quiz. The largest number that divides evenly into both numbers. So let's uh, go ahead and start with some two numbers that I want to ask. What is the large, greatest common factor between these two numbers? That is, what is the largest number that divides evenly into both those numbers? Now, sometimes when they're rather small like this, you can tell automatically. You can just think of numbers, keep going up until you figure out which one's the largest. But... Uh, prime factoring is actually uh, usually much quicker, and especially as the numbers get larger. So you prime factor both those numbers, and then you identify everything they share in common. These are the only two they share in common. So the greatest common factor is going to be 2 times 2, or 4. So... 4 goes evenly into 28 7 times. 4 goes evenly into 36 9 times. Notice that's what the numbers, the leftovers. Okay. And so this also helps when I'm dividing very large numbers when I'm working with common denominators. It becomes a very efficient tool, but right now you must learn how to do it, and you must learn the difference between that and the least common multiple. So the least common multiple, its definition will be this. So the least common multiple, notice it's the smallest number. The greatest common factor, it's the largest number. We see that right in the words or the phrase. The least common multiple, the smallest the smallest number that is a multiple of both numbers. That means both these numbers divide evenly into it. What is the smallest number that both 28 and 36 can divide evenly into? Well, that would not be obvious to me. I can't think that through. I could think by multiplying them together, there is a multiple, but it's not the smallest multiple, most likely. So how do I do that? Well, again, I'm going to identify what they share in common. And now I'm going to write the least common multiple is everything they share in common. They, they share one, two, and another two. They share a seven, and they share two threes. So if you multiply all of that together, you can use your calculator if you want. Or you can just multiply it out. This would be 7 times 9, or 63 times 4. 24, 25. So my least common multiple is 25. Now notice what that means. That means 20, 252. I, I didn't mean 25, I meant 252. 252 can divide evenly into 28. And if you get out your calculator and do that, we will in just a second. I want to show you something else. Or, and I'll take 252, and it will divide evenly into 36. So let's get your calculator out and find the answers there. So 252 divided by 28 is 9. Three and six, or 252 divided by 36 is 7. So they do indeed go in evenly. And it is the smallest number that they will both go into evenly. Now notice, if I look at divide by 28, my answer happens to be 
the leftovers after what they share in common of the other number, the nine. If instead I'm dividing by the 36, my answer happens to be the leftovers of the other number after the ones they have in common. So study this carefully. Go back and watch it two or three times. You must be able to define these words, these terms, least common multiple and greatest common factor. You must know the difference between factoring completely and prime factoring, and you must be able to use those two ideas, the, well, use the prime factoring to find the greatest common factor and the least common multiple. Now, there will be several practice problems on the next page. Okay, so your first practice problem will be prime factoring, and I want you to actually write this number both ways. Do prime factoring and all factoring. So do that for this one. We'll give you three of these. Put it on pause until you have your answers, and then I will write the answers for you. So you should have come back after you have finished. If I'm writing all the factors, it will look like this. If I'm writing the prime factors, it will look like this. Now let's go ahead and practice a second problem. So go ahead and write both types of factoring for 54, prime factoring and all factors. So this would be the answer to the second problem. Now make sure you can do both of those well and accurately. If you cannot, you must go back and review until you can and go back to sections 1.8 and 1.9, 1.7, 1.8, and 1.9 in the text and get more example problems until you're very confident you can do this well. Now the next part of the review will be on finding the greatest common factor and the least common multiple. Now recall that to do these two things you must be able to prime factor first, that would be your first step, then figuring out the greatest common factor and the least common multiple. Do that for 16 and 30, put it on pause, Make sure you can do it and do it accurately. We'll give you several examples of this. Check your answers here. If you have gotten this problem wrong, you want to go back and re-watch that part of the tape. Now let's do another example. The second problem will be 12 and 30. You want to find both the greatest common factor and the least common multiple. And your first step is always to do the prime factoring. Notice what I've done here. I've factored both with using the tree method here and here. I've listed my prime factors here and here and identified the common ones. Now for the least com or greatest common factor, what I do is uh, take the common ones and multiply them together. For the least common multiple, I take the common ones and then I take everything else here and here. So take the common ones once and everything else. So that I think is the easiest way to explain it. And if you're ha still having any trouble at all, um, I want you to review both 1.10 and 1.11. You will have a quiz next Wednesday on these concepts, and you must pass this in order to pass Unit 1. So make sure you're responsible and ready to um, demonstrate your knowledge of the subject.